Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, I was going through my home directory and I found an old project that I had worked on in the past to scan uh, GitHub Actions for a particular type of vulnerability. I actually did a video on that vulnerability, so I will link that in the description. Well, there'll be a you know short explanation of, of that here, but I mostly wanted to focus on the little bit of code that I'm gonna open source. Uh, so, the repo is acetyl archive scan pull request target. Uh, there's a very brief readme which shows some screens. Note that I built this for myself, so there's no documentation other than <laughs> uh, good luck, have fun, and this video, I guess. Uh, so the way this, this tool worked is I wrote a little scanner using the GitHub API. Don't want to call it a scraper because I, I was you know following a documented API. Uh, and basically the way, the way this scanner worked is it looked for a very particular search term and used the GitHub's search API to find uh, you know, repositories which had vulnerable GitHub actions. And basically what I was looking for was pull request target. So this exposes uh, privileged credentials to the pull request. It has to call actions checkout. Uh, so it has to check out the code and it has to somewhere reference github.event.pull request. This usually meant that it was checking out the pull request pull requests code itself, which often made it easy to access those privileged credentials. At least that was the, the idea of this. And of course it had to be a YAML file in GitHub workflows. So that was basically the query that I was looking for. I would find all of the repositories that matched that, I had to sleep a bunch to hit the search API limit, then I would try and find files in their GitHub workflows that had a particular uh, on setting. So this is making sure that it actually is configured for pull request target. And it would try and find a job that ran actions checkout with a special with, uh, and that, you know, with involved uh, trying to load the pull request. So that was basically this, the scanner portion of this. Hit the API, find something very similar to what I'm looking for. Uh, but then I just had like a, ton of results and no real great way to sort through them. Now note this data is out of date, so none of these, none of the ones listed here, or at least none of the ones that I checked <laughs> listed here are still vulnerable, uh, but I made a quick little Flask app to help me visualize the repositories and, and sift through them because you know, there were lots and lots matched. Now, no, this data is like two years out of date, so I wouldn't trust any of this. You know, most of these have been fixed or adjusted since then. Uh, a lot of them were adjusted based on me reporting a security vulnerability. Um, and there were kind of two views here. One was just the base view where it's sorted by stars. I prioritized by popularity because those were the more likely ones to pay out security bounties. I also had a view where I grouped by organizations. So if I found a particular bug and like, you know, this, this, for example, if I found a uh, cloud posse, I could go through all of their repositories at once and and mark the specific ones that were, uh, you know, vulnerable. It also deduped across repositories, so if they all had the same action, I could check the action file once, mark it as good, and then it would, you know, ignore all the rest of them. Uh, and I basically just went through these and you know, reported security vulnerabilities. And uh, if we click into a particular repository, this is roll up before they fixed their bug, for example. Uh, I had a nice little copy and paste where I could send them a nice little email message. I could click mark done if I wanted to mark this repository as completed. Uh, I'll show you what that does in a second. And it uh, listed all of the GitHub workflows as well as their contents here. So I could quickly scroll through them and see if they were problematic. I'll show you the problem here. So pull request target. So that means it is going to run in privileged mode. Uh, it is calling actions checkout. That's the next requirement. And it's checking out the pull request itself. This means a nefarious actor can manipulate the contents of the code that gets run just by uh, changing their pull request. The other thing that we needed to do is it had to somehow run the code from the pull request. And this is enough to run the code from a pull request, running npm ci, npm you know, installing, Dependencies, you can manipulate package.json however you want. You could do pre-install, post-install, whatever. Uh, and so that means you can run arbitrary code. Uh, this step itself actually puts uh, a privileged token into the git folder, so you could access that. Uh, but also, you know, as soon as you're running arbitrary code, you can get access to any of the secrets further on in the file by overriding the executables that are running. So instead of running node, you could run node with my little thing that dumps all the environment variables or something like that. 
that's the basis of the vulnerability. So I was able to, uh, let's actually clear the status. So this is what it would look like before I looked at this at all. Uh, I would click mark bad because I know that this is a bad uh, GitHub Actions. It would you know, give me my little email here. And as soon as I had sent the email, I could click mark done and it would go to a blue status. And that, that helped me kind of iterate through all of these and fix them up. I could also click out to GitHub and see if they had fixed it since then. Uh, you can see here that they have fixed their vulnerability by making sure that it's specifically the rollup repo or it has a special um, label that they labeled this repository with. But that's basically it. I basically used this to find a bunch of problems. Uh, I haven't run this in a while, so you probably will find more. Uh, I just don't have time to report security bugs anymore. <laughs> it's not worth my time. And honestly, you know, I, I reported probably 100, 100 plus of these, and I would say like 90% of them no one replied, 5% of them people replied and fixed it, and like one one or two percent would actually pay out a security bounty for this. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucks to do security research. So I I don't bother anymore. <laughs> uh, but I want to show you the cool little app because I don't know I thought it was cool and it saved me a bunch of time while while scrolling through these and you know I found a bunch of cool stuff with this. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed. <laughs>